just want to go back to Saturday. Um, you got the job done in the end in what I'm sure was a difficult circumstances. How much did you learn about the players that are knocking on your door for a first team place? Um, I was really pleased. Um, you know, I thought if we'd have taken our chances, which is a common theme, if we'd have taken the good moments we had in the game, I thought we could have been out of sight long before they, they got back in it. And obviously two set pieces was frustrating for us because we've been so good at them lately. But considering you've thrown a team together, we didn't have too much time to work on it, maybe only Friday. Um, I was really, really pleased and um, loads of positives to take from it. Everyone that needed that edge on their fitness has got it. And um, going into a big run of games, I feel like there was lo loads to come from it. Going into this run of games, let's say Tuesday's game, do you have your team in mind already? We talked before about you resting players and moving players around. Or, or could maybe a player from Saturday just have played their self into your plans for, for games coming up? No, absolutely. A um, player from Saturday could be in it. I didn't have a team set out. I look at the bigger picture, which isn't just Tuesday's game. It's the fact that we go Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Um, and you look at that, that sort of remit and you think, right, OK, in the long run, who can I give a breather to that's played a lot of games and had a bit of time lately and probably will be better with a, with a little bit of freshness in their legs and, and that's in the long run. So, yeah, no, by all means, there'll be, there'll be you know, maybe a, a few from, from Saturday's game that, that will get himself into Tuesdays and I'll look, I'll look ahead to Saturday once we get Tuesday out of the way. OK, focusing on Tuesday, what are the biggest threats that Dagenham will pose to you? Um, to be honest with you, I think, um, you know, they... They've got a good squad. They've just probably not hit the heights that they, they maybe would have expected to with, with the squad they've put together. Um, so I think they would be frustrated that they've had inconsistency. But as we know, when a team comes, puts a game plan in place and executes it really, really well, you know, we, we, we've we taken ages to sort of get through and finally get our nose in front and win games this season. So um, I don't take anything for granted. If we're not at it, if we're not at our best, if we're not really full of that energy and zest that our performances can bring, then then it doesn't matter who we'll play, we'll have a tough night. Your form at the moment home and away is good, and we touched on this previously, but we're a year into the pandemic now, and I just wonder, does it help being, you know, normally teams win a large percentage of their home games, but, but with no crowds, how are you finding that? Are you finding much difference between a home and away game? Um, yeah, I, I think... I find it strange all round. It just doesn't feel right. Um, the buzz of a Saturday at three o'clock, you know, just knowing the crowd are out there, you know, preparing for a game, turning up and away from home, we always travel so well. So, you know, when I finally come out of the, the, the tunnel for, for an away game, you know, quite often I'm amazed by how many fans I see of ours taking up a large portion of the opposition stadium. So I don't think I can ever get used to not seeing that and the sooner it comes back but the better just a word on the uh, draw for the fa trophy oxford city at home any any thoughts on that you finally got a home tie i guess great well the groundsman won't be happy will he he's got away with murder this season no no fa cup tie and uh, us playing away from 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 home but it's a it's a good draw because oxford obviously right up there in the playoffs at the moment in in the national league north of, uh, sorry south obviously we don't know what's what's going on with that with the league so but they they you know they're one of the stronger teams there and we've just seen with haven't who were in and around the same area um how strong they were so you know at home we fancy ourselves but again we'll have to we'll have to earn the right and last time we spoke you said you didn't know whether the club had voted yet um, now they have came out on Friday and said they'd voted, what, Remain is it, I guess? Um, feels like the referendum here. But, but how happy are you that that kind of, from the club's point of view, is out of the way in the public domain and, and you've made your attentions clear? Yeah, I think it's great. You know, obviously I, I was 99.9% .9 sure that would be our own stance um, and, and great because we get to do our jobs. But uh, we're not there yet. We've got to, uh, that's just part of it. And, and hopefully it'll all, it'll all sort of get pushed through and, and football can, to, can continue at this level. Wonderful. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Lee? Hi, Neil. Um, just, on the, um, just going back to Saturday briefly, Tyrese Palmer, I know obviously he came on, but you, you dipped into the academy. Is that... Is that something that you could do in the future? Yeah, of Again? course, of course. I mean, obviously with the league campaign, we feel that we've got a really strong squad and at times I'm umming and ah in who I can get in the 16-man squad. You know, we don't even at times have keepers on the bench because because of what we might need on the outfield. So, so 
you know, the FA Trophy, when you do want to give a breather during a really congested schedule, is an ideal opportunity. Um, the academy here do a fantastic job. Um, difficult circumstances, obviously, we don't get to see too much of them because of COVID. You're almost keeping both groups in their own bubbles, but you know we trust them. And when when we spoke to uh, Bunny and and Dave Dave the plant the the academy manager about what we you know who who to push forward, who we thought um, you know certainly in the attacking areas might be warrant a, a, a game you know Tyrese came up and uh, you know I know a lot's been made of the fact he got sent off it's it's not an issue to me it's youthfulness youthful exuberance you know maybe the second one he'd let the goalie kick it out but you know when you want to come in and show what you can do I'd rather have a player full of beans full of energy running around and putting himself about than one who, who you have to keep getting on at to, to run so he's done himself no harm um, he, he's obviously will, will serve a one match suspension but that will be for our league game so you know when the next round comes about I wouldn't hesitate to have him back in Did you have to throw an arm around his shoulder after the game? I mean I mean, I imagine as an experienced manager like yourself did you take him to one side? Yeah no I didn't, didn't make a scene of it I just you know put me a hand around the back of his head and just sort of said well you know don't worry about it you know well done and keep your head up and and it didn't need too much more than that I'm not going to make a big deal with it the lads come on try to help us get back in the game did because he got fouled when he was about to score for the for the penalty so he made a big contribution and um, probably made it a day he's certainly not going to forget <laughs> But for, for, for the Knots fans who haven't seen him play, why did you decide to bring him up from the academy and what are his strengths and, and what kind of player is he? Well, he scored a lot of goals um, for him. He's a great size when you look at him for a young lad. He's a good size. Um, and, and they just, you know, he, I think he scored something like, I think he said he'd scored nine goals or something in ten games. Whether he was lying just to promote himself, we don't know. But, um, but yeah, when, as soon as we spoke to the academy guys, and we got to trust them, they see him every day, and we want to know as far as attitude and commitment and the way they train every day, who deserves it. You know, you have to reward players whose attitude's spot on as well, not just ability. And straight away, he was the first name that come up. And as soon as I saw him in training with the first team, um, I was delighted that they had sent him up because uh, you know we we now know that we've got a player we can we can maybe dip in again. Um, obviously, you were able to give Carl Wooden and Michael Doyle a rest at the weekend. I'm, I'm presuming they were just rested. There's no injury concerns, is there? No, no, no. Um, you know, Sam Connell. Connell's obviously been carrying a couple of knocks, so we gave him the weekend off. Same with Doyle and and Kyle. It was just. Like I say, with the schedule, I have to look ahead and play the long game. And just at giving them a weekend, not travelling, long journey down to Haven might just keep a little bit more freshness in their legs. Um, um, typical question coming up, how's Callum Roberts? Yeah, Cal, um, he's, he's had sort of some, you know, one step forward, two steps back a little bit. And he, we've now sort of got to the point where we feel like the injury that was operated on is fine. He's getting a little bit of referral pain, which could be... Um, well, it is that when they've looked at it, is inflammation in a certain area. So the likelihood is he'll, he'll probably have a little um, anti-inflammatory jab into the two areas that are inflamed, and we feel that that will make a huge difference. And um, you know, I'm very hopeful that next week he'll be starting back on the grass again and uh, and getting himself going. And w w that wouldn't be it. Wouldn't be a straight throw back into full training, would it? it would... No, no, no. It'll be, it's always phased back in. You know. Cal's got to get some hard yards into his legs. Every time he's sort of gone down that step, he's had to take a few steps back. So, again, we'll get the hard yards into his legs. And um, once we've done that, then you just gently bring him back into training and start building it up until he can join in full training. Um, it's obviously, that you've got the best defensive record in the National League. It's interesting you hearing you talk about clinical edge. Is that one thing that you think is is perhaps just not quite there with this team at the minute, given the amount of chances that you, you're creating but not taking? Um, possibly, but I think I'm, maybe I'm being critic, over-critical. It's, it's difficult because, you know, a lot of our games haven't been, so to speak, end-to-end. -end. You know, a lot of teams have shown us some respect and, and uh, you know, defended a bit deeper and put numbers behind the ball and at this level you know it's very very difficult to break teams down with numbers behind the ball you know you have to that final pass that final touch is just under a little bit more microscope you know we we haven't had too many times where we're 3v3 with the opposition um, and stuff like that and loads of space to work in so it's a lot harder for the forward players but we're working hard on it and you know I, I'm I'm happy that we're creating lots of chances and lots of moments. It's obviously taking them that, that's the most important thing. 
Yeah, brilliant. There's no sorry, sorry, just fine. There's no injury concerns. Is there? You've got a fully fit squad, have you? Um, the yeah. only players that we have got for personal reasons um, that are probably going to be doubtful for tomorrow is is Calvin Miller and uh, Matty Wolf. But that's um, you know I, I won't delve into it because it's personal. But you know they've had some both of them have had some bad news lately, and I've given them a little bit of compassionate time uh, for a few days to 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 be with people they need to be with. Right. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks, Lee. Over to you, Jake. It's a fine deal. Um, just a quick follow up uh, follow up on them um, on the subject of Tyrese Palmer. Um, as you mentioned, you kind of like dipped into the academy and the given. Pl- the players that deserve it a shot. Do you think that would that could buoy some of the people in some of the players in the academy to think, right, I've got a chance of making it into the first team here? Well I hope so and I hope it, it should always I mean they should do it anyway, but it should always show you that, you know, when the first team manager asks Dave and, and Bunny and the guys, you know, who, what, who's doing well, who's not, whose attitude's spot on, that the you know, if they've put themselves to the front of that list, because, you know, Tyrese was a forward we felt like we could do with another attacker on the bench there might come the next game where we want an attacker a midfielder and a defender on the bench you know so I think at that point um, everyone's got to be at it and everybody's got to warrant that decision Absolutely and, and, and just a quick word on Jimmy Knows of course his um, his goal was uh, a penalty at the weekend but once again he, he takes another opportunity and he gets his name on the score sheet It was a rubbish penalty though wasn't it <laughs> and goal he should have saved it <laughs> First thing I said to him was, I said it was a rubbish penalty. He said it went in, didn't it? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> fair play to the lad. He's, uh, he, I have a little bit. I work really hard with Jimmy. I do loads of extra work with him after training. You know, we're working on his head in, his left foot, loads of different types of finishes. You know, I'm trying to show him that he can't just be a striker that plays up in a two all the time because a lot of teams play with one, a lot of teams play with a front three, and he's got to learn to adapt and, and be able to get into a team in, in many different positions. And uh, he's a great lad, willing lad. And like I say, sometimes his energy and the tempo of his play gets him into good areas. But what he did for the first goal was a lot more impressive than his actual goal. You know, got got isolated 1v1, great, great uh, skill to beat the guy and then picked out the right pass. And... Uh, I'm really pleased with his progression. Um, I, I want to develop the lad, not only for our first team, but but for the, for his future because he's a willing learner. Yeah, I was going to say from with you working so closely and hard with him, just how much progress have you noticed he's made since he since he came to the club on loan? He has made loads, and just being around a first team on a regular basis and being part of a squad is one thing that helps. But um, you know he's got the demands of the players behind him. What's expected? Um, he still needs to. And again, he's a very slight boy, quite skinny, which makes him great as far as his agility and his his, his pace. But uh, obviously, with his back to goal and big centre halves behind him, um, you know he needs to work at that side, which we are. Um, so there's loads of little bits that we're trying to trying to get get right with him. But um, I'm delighted with him. He's been a great sub. He's probably been one of the best players at sniffing in and around things in the box. Scoring goals is always a great thing for a striker. Um, watch this space because I'm, you know, I know we haven't used him too much, but we are developing him and we are going to use him for sure. So um, I just want need to make sure it's the right times for him as well as the first thing. Yeah, I was going to say, do you see him being even more of a kind of like a key player and making more of an impact as the season goes on? Absolutely, uh, I've got. You know, when when everybody's fit, when Cal Roberts is back as well, we're going to have. I'm going to have a difficult decision trying to put a 16 out, and I'm going to be having a few people left out of squads that won't be happy. So, long may that continue. But hopefully, the first team are warranting the the, the um, starting eleven will be warranting it because of their performances. Great stuff, and, and and just a quick word on the FA Trophy. Of course, it's um, the quarter final tie has been uh, been made against Oxford City with just two games away from Wembley. Does it now start to feel a bit real that a trip to a, a trip to the capital could yeah. be on the cards again? We or? said the same last year. We just sort of mm. ploughed our way through the earlier ends, and we haven't had easy draws. We had them um, this year. We've we've had some tough draws away from home, Stockport and stuff like that. Last year we had to go to Yeovil and we had to play Dagenham and Chesterfield away. So we had some tough draws then. Um, we seem to do it the hard way, but hopefully we can go one step further. It would be great. You know, our ultimate aim is to try and get promoted and. If we can get a Wembley visit for the fans at the same time um, and they're allowed back, that will, that will be the icing on the cake. Great stuff. And just finally for me, just a quick word um, ahead of the uh, the Dagenham League clash. Looking at the table now, I know I know you like to uh, to base the table on a points per game scenario and how teams look in that regard. And, and if you do break it down like that, although Torquay are 
um, out and out on quite a clear way ahead of the top, breaking it down on points per game uh, basis in the league. And it looks a heck of a lot different. It looks a lot tighter than it perhaps otherwise would. Uh, yeah, I, I still believe I believe that the the sort of teams in and around the top at the moment are strong. Um, you know, uh, that's not to disrespect anybody who's not in there. Uh, who can come with a late run, but I certainly think Torquay, Stockport, Sutton United, Hartlepool uh, are really, really strong. Um, and, I, and I believe that, uh, you know, it's going to go all the way to the wire. I know Torquay are clear at the moment and they've got a really, really good manager, but I believe that everyone can keep up the tempo and uh, it will be interesting come what the end of the season, especially with so many teams having to play a lot of games. Cool, great. So that's all from me. Wish you well for tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, Neil. You. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jake. Over to you, John. Yeah, yeah, just to follow up on that last question, um, Hearts are a statistically minded club. Um, do you have a figure in mind as to what points tally you might need to achieve the objectives you've set for the club? Because um, it's 44 games, I'd have to sort of go back and work it out because normally when it's, mm. um, when it's 46, I think you need to get high 80s minimum to sort of win the league, and that's minimum. Um, I think you need to sort of get you know, anything from normally in a normal season, 72 points up to give yourself a chance of the playoffs. Um, so with them two games missing, um, you know, where that will end up, I don't know. But I certainly think we need to aim to get above 80 points um, in our season. And, and that's going to need, you know, high sort of 1.9 points per game to, to be getting there um, and give ourselves a chance. I think you, you're probably in a, a similar position as far as um, the leaders are concerned as, as the same stage last season. Barrow were out on their own for quite a while and then started to, to fade a little bit just before the um, before play was suspended. Do you, do you still think it's realistic to aim for that uh, top promotion spot, the automatic spot? Well, with no disrespect to Torquay, because I think they're an excellent team and they've got you know probably the, the most decorated manager in the league. Um, we're not even halfway through the season yet. We're a long way from it. We've only just got to a third of the way through the season. Torquay are a little bit closer to halfway through the season. So, you know, the first half of the season isn't complete and we're already handing a title over. Um, I don't think that that's the case. And if Torquay can continue with their sort of points per game ratio they're on now, it's going to be very, very difficult to catch them. But we're certainly, with the amount of disruption that's gone on, we're certainly not writing off trying to finish top of the league because that's got to be our aim and if we don't don't get there and we end up in the playoffs then great you've been balancing obviously the two the two priorities and that you, you've, you've stated quite clearly that obviously the main priority is to get promotion this season but you've got the the FA trophy as well now now that it's come to the quarter final stage in a home, home draw do you regard it any way differently than you have the, the first three rounds no not at all um, when it comes to the next round, I will look at the players and see who's fresh, who needs more game time, who, who doesn't need game time, and I'll pick the team accordingly, and it will be based around the following league game and the games that are coming up and the games that people have played. Because, you know, we need to try. It's going to be very difficult to keep everyone fit. With You know, we're Saturday, Tuesday nearly for the rest of the season. It's going to be very difficult to keep everybody fit and injury-free. Um, so, you know, it's going to be survival of the fittest and hopefully we can hang on in there and keep our form till the end of the season. What do you think about the uh, the draw against Oxford? Obviously, you're at home for the first time in the run and uh, you're playing a side in some ways on a similar level to the one that you um, had a very good game with on Saturday. Yeah, great. It's, you know, if, if not, it's, it's not the perfect draw, so to speak, because Oxford are a good team, but being at home and being at, you know, we've just played Haven't, so we know how strong the level is. We fancy ourselves at home. Um, Oxford's a great club, and um, we're excited by it. So, so we it's it's close to as good a draw as we could have hoped for. Not as in we're going to beat Oxford, but as in we we believe at home we we, we can beat most teams, and it will be a really competitive game.